all ears English listeners, um, this is a very special episode, and not because I'm hosting it, because I'm not always here, but we have an extremely amazing guest today. I am so excited for you guys to meet Amar. Amar, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm great. Um, so guys, there are so many amazing achievements that I could share with you that Amar has, but I'm going to start with the one I think is the coolest. You were on Sesame Street, correct? Well, um, technically, it's called Iftahya Simsim in Arabic, uh, which is uh, cool. translates to Open Sesame. Um, but it's the Arabic version of Sesame Street. Um, for people who don't make, I mean, most of everybody knows, but Sesame has like different productions that they have like around the world. So they have like yeah. a German Sesame, there's a Japanese Sesame, there's like, yeah. a, I think, a Mexican or Argentinian or something. So they have like all these production around the world. We were one of them uh, a few years ago uh, and we produced like three seasons. I was part of two and it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. So this is um, something I want all of our listeners to think about for a moment, because the fact that we could all be from different countries and grow up with the same show, I know that it's different in every country, of course, it's going to be a yeah. different language, but like the values are the same. If you could tell us a little bit about why Sesame Street was a special project to work on for you, because I want to get at this, like this connection standpoint, right? Because people from all over the world, we were all little kids. We've all seen Sesame Street somehow. Um, what are the values of Sesame Street that you remember connecting to? I mean, just just you know, learning through fantastical characters, learning through yes. imagination, learning through mm -hmm. um, comedy. Uh, it all was like grabbing to me, and and yeah, growing up uh, as a young kid, I think I was like three years old when I was watching Sesame Street, and I grew up with these, you know, characters like Cookie Monster and and, and Grover and and Kermit the yeah. Frog and and everybody, and it was it was it was fantastic for me to be part of this legacy um, totally. because I, I, I grew up with it. And at some point I really thought that that was a world that I can maybe try to enter. And I like with my little brain, I thought if, if I could just open the, you know, the glass shield on the television, maybe <laughs> I can go into the world that they have, oh, but eventually, eventually I, yeah, well, I, I found my way to Sesame Street and uh, and I, I, I entered that world and it was just, I mean, I don't know. It was the highlight of my life, I think. That's incredible. <laughs> um, so before we get to a couple other um, notable achievements I want to share with you guys about Amar, um, I want to tell you the purpose of this episode is to try to encourage everyone listening to start more conversations with inspiring creative people. We are going to talk about three specific questions that you guys can ask an artist, a creative person, someone who maybe you are shy about talking to. What can you talk about when you meet these amazing people? Because we want you to start conversations with people that inspire you. And I know I am inspired by Amar and all that you've achieved. So a couple other things before we get to those questions. Um, you've also written some TV shows. Is that right? Yes, um, we have. Well, I've, I've written episodes for Iftah Simsim. I, I've written six episodes, uh, directed so one cool. or two of them. Um, and I, I did work on another, some some other uh, TV shows, uh, cartoons. Um, cool. We have like an equivalent to uh, Cartoon Network in the Arab world called Space Tune. Uh, oh, rad. I've written, yeah, I've written two shows for them. I've written like, uh, we have some of these like famous YouTubers. They uh, also in Saudi, they, they're called Saudi Reporters. They, mm -hmm. they did a, a cartoon, uh, four episode cartoon series that I was a part of, uh, wrote, or you know, like I was the lead writer. We wrote together, uh, did some voices, directed, you know, the, the show. So 
it's it's just thrilling. I mean, just from from somebody who loves to consume entertainment and animation um, yeah. and comedy to somebody creating that and learning to create totally. it. I still consider myself at the you know at, at at the beginning of my career when it comes to this because I used to be an architect, believe it or not. And then really, <laughs> yes, I didn't left know that. that. <laughs> yeah, I left that behind just to go into entertainment and. So I'm learning, and 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 if the Hasimsim or Sesame Street was like my education, like those three almost four years that I worked there, mm-hmm. it was like my crash course into um, uh, entertainment. And yeah. at some point, I was considering going to uh, uh, like the University of Connecticut or something to 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 get a master's in in puppetry or oh, or wow. you know, filmmaking and stuff. And yeah. my mentor at Sesame, who's uh, amazing guy uh mr marty marty uh robinson he's a telly monster and he's Mr. famous Sopopagus, by the way yes yeah um so he told me amar it's like you're, you're doing it like you're you're learning while doing you know the thing that you want there's nothing yeah that a college program will teach you that you're not learning on the job right now so just, just you know soak it all in um try to get as much as you can and you you'll be good you don't you don't need like a piece of paper that tells people what you what you can do it's like yeah. just show them what you can do and you are doing it and he was so kind enough to to send me like a, a video recommendation <laughs> um that was like i i had to just put it on my instagram it's like it's like the first <laughs> video i pinned it up it's like so this cool. is like something that you cannot buy you know somebody right? of his stature to recommend yeah. me to anybody who wants to work with me. And that that that's that's my master's certificate, honestly. Um, <laughs> I want to just point out a couple terms that you use that I want our students to catch on to. So to soak it all in, this is a great phrase that's like just absorb, just take in all of this information and all of the lessons around you, right? So anytime you're in a situation Mm -hmm. that there's a lot going on, sometimes you just have to stop and soak it all in, right? Just observe everything that's happening. Like a sponge, exactly. Um, And then you said he was your um, mentor, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, Mentor is an awesome word, guys. Anybody that is um, usually in your profession that you look up to that can give you career advice, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So that's a mentor. Okay, awesome. And then in 2015, you started Saudi Arabia's first podcasting network. Now, <laughs> the podcasting network, MSTDFR, that doesn't yeah. quite roll off the tongue in English. Um, can you tell me why you <laughs> chose those letters? Like, where does that name come from? Well, I mean, I don't think, first of all, we, we were the first network. I don't know. Maybe we were, but okay. nobody was counting but there were a lot of podcasts before we started um years before we started and we were inspired by other podcasts in saudi so i just just to point that out um but the name you weren't you weren't the first podcast but um the network that you started was the first it might have been it might have been yes official like network maybe but um the 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 name is 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 in arabic it's mustatfir um, and okay. it comes from like nerd or geek or geek curs oh. or nerd durs or something. I don't know. Of uh, <laughs> like because we were we were inspired by and we were joking. Uh, the first episode we, we we started the first episode we didn't we didn't have a, a name uh, for the show, but okay. a lot of us were inspired by uh, an American podcast called The Nerdist. Yes, and yes. We were trying. Yes, so we were trying to explain to our listeners what we are, what type of show this is. And we were telling mm-hmm. them that we were inspired by the Nerdist. So, and one of us was joking is like, yeah, so we're the Arabic Nerdists. And right, then right. he used the Arabic kind of translation to Nerdist. So we Got have it. the slang word, word uh, uh, in Arabic called Dafur, which right. literally translates into like a, 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 a furnace or something. Oh, okay. And and we usually, like people here in school use that um they use that term to describe kids who are nerds because they're okay. like a furnace. They're just on all night, like just reading and studying and, you know. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah. So that's where it comes from, dafur. So then oh, we so turned cool. it into like a verb where we're right. mustatfirin or like we're trying to be uh, uh, nerds. We're, we're not really maybe nerds. We're not maybe really geeks, but we're geeking out. And that's yes. where the word came from. 
And when we when we wrote the name, uh, my friend, uh, one of my, my co-founder um, of the podcast and the network, um, he's a technical guy and he's into the internet and all of this, mm-hmm. you know, he's stuff. He's a nerd. So he, he is. He is. He's a super nerd. <laughs> um, so he's like, you know what? Let's just write it without any vowels to make it easier. So so if totally. you're going to say Mustadfir, it's like, is it an M-O or M-U or is, is right. there an E at the end? He's like, you know what? Just take the vowels out and just keep the main letters. And that's where it came <laughs> from. So it's weird in English, but it, it just makes perfect sense in Arabic. <laughs> well, I mean, that's your audience. You're not worried about the English audience when you were thinking of that name. And guys, I just, so I'm going to get to these three questions right now, but sure. I just want um, everybody to listen to that last bit of the interview a few times, because I love how you are able to so clearly um, explain stuff from your first language in English, the meanings, the slang. And that's something that I want our students to try to do when they're meeting people that are maybe native English speakers. Guys, you can bring in some interesting slang from your first language and explain it in English. Because you know what? We have our own slang to connect to. Like if you're describing, I love thinking of like nerds as furnaces because we're, I say we, because I'm totally a nerd. Like we're always like on fire for very specific nerdy things. And I love that like crossover between the cultures. So guys, what a great example of using your own language and culture to connect to somebody else in English. I love it. Okay. So three questions, guys, for you to start your own conversations with amazing people like Amar. So the first question, super easy. Um, I love when people ask me this personally. So the first question is, what are you working on these days? Um, So this is a great question, right? Because obviously, Amar, you have... You have so many things happening, and when you are on fire about a project, you want to talk about it. So yes. let's see how this goes. All right, Amar, what are you working okay. on these days? Um, okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm publishing my first uh, book. It's a children's uh, picture book. Um, ah, cool. It's called Planet Number Three, um, and it's about these two aliens who land on Earth and um they land at like at a house uh, where a a teenage girl lives who wants to be a scientist she lives with her grandfather her parents disappeared some time ago and um she the, the whole purpose of this uh show or book or story is to teach kids about the world through fresh eyes because they have fresh eyes they don't know what's going on yeah. uh growing up and they need some you know guidance and I don't want to talk down to kids. And yeah. I feel like we need to do something that really talks to them and show them through examples. And so yeah. we use these two aliens who are puppets that I uh, that I have also um, cool. to teach through them. They The aliens make them as stupid and st- silly and funny mistakes. So yeah. the kids don't have to. Um, yeah. So we're doing it as a book. We started as an audio show uh, that was published a few months wow. ago. Um, on Storytel, and, and now we're publishing it as a book, and hopefully, um, at some time in the future, we can do it into a, like a TV show or a, a film. Um, oh, that's fantastic! Also, yesterday I was in Dubai for one day. We had a a pitch meeting where we pitched a few film ideas, two of which were my ideas. So I'm trying to get into filmmaking right now. Um, awesome! And hopefully, hopefully, like. Um, we get picked up, and if we do, the next two years I'm going to be super busy because I'm going to have to be working on and writing my first feature film. Oh my um, gosh! Oh yes! <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I don't know how you have time for everything. Um, well, I have. I, I also have a nine to five where I work as a creative content director, so we have that going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm producing two shows, trying to produce a third one. Um, Oh my Actually, gosh. I'm trying to produce. There's, there's a, there's two shows that are in English. One that we've produced, um, uh, podcast shows. One is called uh, "Let's Talk Saudi," and the oh, whole purpose rad. of it is to get people to uh, know us as Saudis, not, not, not oh, politics, fantastic. you know, not religion, not all like just us as people, knowing okay. other people. And we meet Saudis and non-Saudis living in Saudi Arabia um, uh, to get 
you know, that message across. We tried it out like a few episodes and now we're trying to look for people to help us, you know, uh, maybe to sponsor or produce the show. Um, and so, there's another show sorry. that we're planning on to, to do, but I can't say too much about it right now. <laughs> Where is that show in English available? Uh, everywhere. You can find it on, on Apple, on, on uh, Spotify, I think. Okay. Um, anywhere so it's another where podcast. podcasts are available. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's another podcast. We had, I think, 12 episodes or 10 episodes up. And what's the name uh, of that podcast? Let's, uh, let's Talk Saudi. Let's Talk Saudi. Guys, I because this is one question that I wanted to um, end the, the episode today with, but I'll bring it up now. Um, in meeting people from other countries that maybe you don't know a lot about, and maybe um, the stuff you see in the news is sort of one-sided or it's only about politics or it's only about such and such. Guys, I think the biggest thing is to get to know the people from that country as people, right? But also, mm -hmm. There are so many aspects that are amazing and beautiful about every country, no matter where you live. And I really want all of you guys to check out this podcast. Let's talk. Let's talk Saudi. Let's talk Saudi. Let's talk Saudi. All right. Wherever you get your podcast. Okay. That's awesome. Um, now, obviously, guys, his answers to just that first question we could talk for days because there was so much information. I have a thousand follow-up questions about everything you just said, <laughs> but we don't have time for all that. I but I want, I want students to see how just one question could spark an entire hour or more long conversation. Um, okay, mm -hmm. let's get to the second question you could ask. You could say, what are you into right now? Like, movies or TV shows. Now, the reason why I love asking creative people this question is because they're also inspired by other creations, right? Like yeah. <laughs> if I like to write, I love to read good writing. Um, you know what I mean? So asking mm -hmm. a creative person what they are absorbing, what they're soaking in is a great way to get some recommendations and also to learn more about that person. So Amar, are you, are you binging anything right now? I don't see how you would have time, but any movies or TV shows that you're into right now? Um, well, uh, I, I was a few months ago, but right now I, I think I got a little busy and I'm not watching yeah. anything. But then sure. again, it's like I struggled with this question yesterday. Actually, I was filling out something with 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 a group of friends, and one of the questions was, uh, "What's your hobbies?" Mm -hmm. um, and and I was talking to my wife. It's like everything I like, I, I'm I'm doing is work. I, I can't consider it my hobby. So what what it's like TV, cartoons, movies. It's like I'm doing it and I'm watching, and it's all research. <laughs> you know, and, and just learning from it. Um, but I think the one thing that I'm really into right now is uh, philosophy. Uh, okay. I love philosophy. I never studied it. Um, I'm not a professional philosopher or anything. I, I don't know the first thing about it academically, but I love to think in a philosophical manner and, you know, dissect stuff and being devil's advocate and looking at things from a different perspective. So uh, some some of the people I know who, who likes philosophy and have like right minds, I just... My hobby right now is just to sit with them and, and just have conversations where we just, you know, dive into rabbit holes of, of you know, thoughts and, and, yeah. and you know, um, uh, just just any any type of any type of subject. Nothing is off, you know, off, uh, off the table. But at the same time, it we, we love to do it in a safe environment where people would not get the wrong idea of what totally. we're trying to do. It was yeah. ju you're just trying to expand your mind, you know? Yeah, um, completely. So we never do it publicly. It's always like in okay. you know, closed rooms and we sit together <laughs> and we do it. And I think I enjoy that the most at the moment. I love this. I really um, dabble in philosophy myself off and on. I go through phases, you know, where I'm studying a lot or reading a lot about a certain thing. I think I first got into it, I had like a small book on um, the Stoics. And I was so fascinated by Stoicism. Um, mm -hmm. And guys, if you would like to dabble in philosophy, there's an awesome podcast called Philosophize This that I highly recommend. The dude's amazing. So that's a great way to keep learning as well. And Amar, mm -hmm. if you don't know that podcast, you would probably like it. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. 
So here's the last question. And um, to be honest, guys, this this question Amar himself came up with because I'm like, well, what do you want to be asked? You know, so yeah. this is um, this isn't like a specific question like the first two, but it is asking for advice. So if we're looking towards if we're looking to someone for inspiration, you know, for if you feel stuck in any way in your life, what can you ask this person? Don't be afraid to ask for help, to ask for advice or ideas, right? Um, it doesn't matter if you're not even working in the same field, we can all feel stuck sometimes. And so really talking out loud with someone you admire is a great way to get through that. So, um, Edmar, I said Admar. Amar, is there any um is there anything that has happened in the past year that maybe was a failure that maybe wasn't a success and what kind of lesson did you learn from that experience? Well, yeah, I mean and and this was brought up to me. I was I was part of a like a leadership program that I was fortunate enough to be accepted in um and part of the program, they 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 gave each one of us um, like a, a, an executive coach to help you with your own you know life and projects and stuff like that. And with my sessions um, with my coach, he pointed out something to, to me that through conversation, he didn't really just point it out, but it was like just, we just arrived to that through conversation that I was spreading myself too thin, I think, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. everything I was trying to do. But more importantly, I didn't have a plan. I'm, I'm a person who's uh, spontaneous. I love to do stuff like on a whim. I, I follow my gut and everything. Like for the past 10 years, I never listened to my brain. It's always my gut. And, <laughs> and, and a lot of great things happened, but I didn't have, you know, that end goal, that checkered flag right. that I'm looking at to know yeah. where I'm going. So I'm just yeah. like, you know, you're just going into different directions, which you can accomplish a lot of things. But once we realize that and we set some goals mm -hmm. um, uh, and and I have a timeline, it's like 2026. Yeah. This is the list of accomplishments that I need to have. That's and, fantastic. and like we wrote it down and we, yeah. we, we took out whatever is not in in my circle of influence. Right. And whatever's in my circle of influence, we kept it in the on like on a piece of paper. And he's like, okay, it. fold it up, put it in your pocket, just keep it there. So you you're always, you know, on you know, on target. Yes. Um, and yeah. it just put everything into perspective. It's like totally. I'm still doing whatever I used to do before, mm -hmm. but now it's more targeted, it's more focused, and I know what I need to accomplish. So whenever I get an idea of something that's not adding to what it is that I'm supposed to get done right. by 2026, I know it's like, you know what? I can put this aside. I don't have to do yeah. this. I, I need to do the, uh, you know, this. So totally. you can do new stuff. You can go with like on a whim to with new ideas, but as long as it's, you know, progressing your journey to get mm -hmm. to where you need to be. And yeah, so definitely. if I'm going to advise anybody who's like me, who has like ADHD and OCD and, you know, a lot of these wonderful <laughs> <laughs> um, challenges syndromes that we have no <laughs> challenges yes um it it really helps when you have something that you can aim for so definitely try to put yeah, in and I it's agree. like it's not just one goal it's like for me it's like i want to do this 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 yeah. and all of these has to be done by uh, a certain year um yeah. and it the, i still have that piece of paper in my pocket a year later and oh, that's I amazing. keep forgetting that it's there. And it's like, what is this piece of paper? And I open up, it's like, oh, it's my goals. It's like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to put it back. <laughs> Guys, I love this advice. And I 100% agree. Um, it is so worthwhile to sit down and really think about your goals and your plans, right? Have a direction because there are a billion different things we can do. So many different mm -hmm. choices. And, um, if we don't have a plan, then oftentimes we're just digging shallow holes. We're just creating a little bit of progress in a bunch of random areas, but none of it is really coming together. And it also has to do not just with ultimate achievements, but with motivation. Mm -hmm. 
I yeah. think if we know why we're doing something, we're a lot more motivated to do it, right? Because not every exactly. step in the process is fun. Not every step is like, oh, oh yeah. I'm so happy I made this choice, but they're necessary. So if you keep that ultimate goal in mind, like learning a new language, right? Like learning English, mm -hmm. keep that ultimate goal in mind. Why are you learning? You know, not just like, oh, I want to be fluent. Okay, but why? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As adults, we need the why. All right. Um, where can people find you online and start following you? Because there are so many amazing things that you're working on. Where can we get that information? How can we follow you? The best place to find me is on Instagram. Uh, my account is T-H-I-R-T-I-W-A-N, a 31, spelled like Obi-Wan uh, mm -hmm. from, from, from Star Wars. I love it so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that that's where you I mean, it's like if whenever I have time to post anything um, that that's where you can find me. And if you need to get in touch with me, you can just send me a direct message. I usually, you know, get back to you sometime. But I I, I don't like these messages. To, I mean, if it's a real serious question and somebody wants something, sure. I definitely do. If it's an ad or you're telling me to. You know? Oh, nobody's going to send you that. From <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Mark. We have our listeners are better than that. Um, okay. So definitely, guys, follow Amar on Instagram, 31, T-H-I-R-T-I-W-A-N, um, spelled like Star Wars. So definitely follow him on Instagram. And um, yeah. Amar, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really hope that we have inspired our listeners to connect to amazing people in English. And good luck with your thousand different projects. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, um, and, and thank you for having me on the show. I, I enjoyed this. Awesome. Our pleasure. All right. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye.